Around central Indiana, community has built buildings to help those with cancer not just cope, but survive. And in each of those buildings, there are key people like Susie, a cancer survivor herself, who work tirelessly and anonymously. They do more than stock infusion rooms and park cars. They are far more than volunteers and housekeepers. They are keepers of the spirit. Got some that you have to cheer up a little bit and give them a little bit of courage, and others, you know, you just chit chat about the day, how they're feeling. And I've had a patient that just wanted to give up, and I told her I'd kick her butt. I said, You got grandkids that's going to give you great grandbabies. She's in remission. She thanked me for getting on her case. They are often never seen, doing their chores before the sun ever rises or after the day's last patient has left. But their presence doesn't go unnoticed, like chimes from a distant church tower, invisible, yet leaving you hollow if silent. The patient said, thank you for keeping our building clean. She says, you're a ray of sunshine here. So, I mean, it just gets to your heart. Every time I hear that bell ring in radiology because it's their last treatment, I still get the goosebumps. I greet all the patients as they're coming in. I ask if they need assistance with a wheelchair. I ask if they need me to park their car for them. And I like the fact that I get to serve people, to just stay positive and, and to encourage them as they're going through this process. It takes a special soul to help those in need, to turn tiring into fulfilling to park cars in the rain, to give a smile to those that may have lost theirs. If you've ever wondered what motivates these people, it might be the phrase, there but for the grace of God, go I. It's a happy time when they don't have to come in anymore and then you're just gonna see them for appointments. You celebrate with them when they have their last treatment, cheer for them when they're leaving. A lot of things of what I do is behind the scenes. I help take care of everyone here, from medical supplies, office supplies, linen. No one ever said that taking inventory of a never-ending arrival of supplies was glamorous, or that distributing those supplies to three floors of oncology rooms and then starting over again the next day was anyone's idea of a vacation. But it's Dana's idea of what's rewarding. She makes sure every drawer is filled and every room is prepped. And while no patient will ever know who chilled their drink or warmed their blanket, we all know it's unselfish dedication like this that makes for one less pothole in a cancer patient's journey. I consider every patient that comes in a family member. I may not see them or talk to them. I'm gonna make sure that they have what they need when they need it and make sure that you know the nurses and everyone's taken care of. My job in the cancer center is to take care of the patients, because patients must come first. And I love what I do. And what we give, we get back tenfold. It is unbelievable. There are many adjectives to describe one's fight with cancer. Scary, lonely. But then, there's Eileen, an unpaid volunteer who takes every one of those bleak adjectives and bashes them to bits with a soft pillow, a warm smile, and that charming over-the-pond accent. With her as your co-pilot, cancer can't help but shrink into remission. Preferring to be in the trenches with her patients, Eileen's only paycheck is a laugh heard from a distant infusion room or a victorious fist pump after a patient's final treatment. When you work in a cancer center, it gives you a, a perspective because here's where the battles are. When a patient finally finishes their chemo, they have been successful, they finally get to ring the bell three times. And that, to me, means more than anything because we went through the journey together with them and we have succeeded. It's the most beautiful sight. I mean, it brings me to tears. You have come to know us as community. We hope now you know us as Susie, Leslie, Dana, and Eileen. Four of our ambassadors who are on a secret mission to prove that the most effective tools to battle cancer may very well be a supply cart, a parking spot, 
a vacuum cleaner, and a hug. <laughs>